Between July 1964 and November 1969, five and a half years, the Supremes charted 12 number one hits on Billboard, numerous top 10s and top 20s. We were in the heart of the 60s. Music was changing, and Motown played a huge role in establishing the rhythm of that change. Smokey, Marvin, Stevie Wonder, Martha Reeves, and of course, the Supremes. An American icon, a true musical star, original founding member of the Supremes, Mary Wilson, welcome to WIBG. Well, that's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're performing in Millville May 18th at the Leboy Theater. We're Good. encouraging everyone to get out and check out your show. With your background, so much history going on there. My goodness, between the beginnings with the Supremes and then on to what you're doing today. Wow. It's you're you're like it's expanded. You're you're writing books and you're singing jazz and <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it was so great having having uh, starting early. We did start early, Flo, Diane, and I. So, you know, it was it was when we were children, and uh, I've had a lot of time to do a lot of different things because I had a lot of time. It's getting shorter now, but <laughs> it was just great, and I've I've enjoyed doing a lot of different things. I'm I'm very proud that I'm I was able to write a couple of books, and uh, th- you know what was really one of the best things that ever happened to me. Colin Powell had me being a uh, the cultural ambassador. I had already traveled the world with the Supremes, right. and then with with the uh, diplomacy policy that it was during uh, Bush's actually administration, and I was able to travel again and go to places that I had never been to. Some of the African countries, and I went to India, and uh, so I was all, kind of all over the place. And it was amazing to see how uh, how the music had uh, actually been in all those places. And that, that was in the 60s, very early. And um, people, I had one professor walk up to me. I don't know if I should say this on the program, but I will anyway, because he was a professor. And he said, you know that when I was a boy, I smoked lots of weed, <laughs> listening to the Motown records. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> It was just amazing how the music really touched uh, so many, it touched the world. It's amazing to me even now, uh, looking back, and uh, I remember as a kid watching Ed Hurst here locally, and here are the Supremes on Steel Pier in Atlantic City, and I was floored. You yeah. guys were so so great. You know, I I do remember the the Steel Pier because we used to we did work there a lot, and uh, we we would always have to run because you know there was only way one way in and one way out. So we we were always at the end of the pier performing, and I remember passing that that diving horse, right, the right, white right. Di- diving horse, I, <laughs> and and we just loved it. But then we have to, after the shows were over, we would have to run out because the, the crowds would follow us and we and, and we had to just literally run. <laughs> I can imagine what that must be like for you. And especially then. Now you and Florence were in grade school together, right? We went to grade school together but uh, for a short while and uh, actually, but we all three of us lived in, right around the corner of each other. We were all neighbors. It just so happened, I think, that uh, Flo and I went to the same So here you are. You're so young. You really haven't really been around yet. You know, you're, you're trying to break into Motown. You finally got some attention from Barry Gordy. And and here you are, you know, running to places like a Steel Pier in Atlantic City. You're you're a girl from Detroit, and now how old are you? Mm-hmm. You're a kid. Mm-hmm. You're just. Well, we started singing. Uh, what, I think Diana and I were thirteen, and Flo and Betty. Betty Flo was about thirteen and a half, and Betty was actually a little older than we. She was a couple of years older than us, so uh-huh. <laughs> she didn't last very long. We were like really kids. <laughs> wow, it's just, and then that's, and then there you go. You just from there, your life went on, and. You've made so many trips, like you said, around the world, you know, and I can relate to you coming to Wildwood, my yes, area. Yes, you know, I remember Wildwood very well because we did we did a lot of shows there, and uh, I remember running in the rain when we were in Wildwood, and it was so wonderful, uh, and I've, I've, I've never forgotten that moment, you know, being in Wildwood. That's amazing. <laughs> you seem to do a lot of running when you're in New Jersey. What, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is true, right? I hadn't thought about that. But it was, you know, it was a nice area when people, you know, they would have their, their summers out and mm-hmm. it was still very wonderful, the fun. If you remember, but I think you were here back in like 2004 or something like that. Well, I think that may have been when I put together a show for, it was females, if, if I'm thinking correctly. Uh, I put together a show of all the female group. And, and the Crystals, and we had the Shirelles, and myself, I think Martha and the 
of the Vandellas, and right, right, so yeah, right. there were lots of, and even uh, my very dear friend Nedra from the Ronettes. I, I, I put together a couple of those uh, those female tours, and they were very well received in your area. So you know, life is really good, and, and recording all those records, I have to bring this point up. The Supremes had five consecutive number ones in the '60s, in 1964, '65, and um, it, and I remember it was the British Invasion. And we were like the girl group that really gave them a run for their money, speaking about running. And every time the Beatles would have a number one, we'd be number two. Then we'd be number one, they'd be number two. And it was so much fun being able to, uh, you know, come from Detroit, Michigan, from the Brewster Projects, and then travel the world and be a part of that whole sort of renaissance. It was just great, you know, how the music was just taking the world. Rock and roll was at its height, and we were right there. I tell you, there was nothing better. If I could do that again, I would do that one again. Would you? No regrets. Well, I wouldn't say no regrets, <laughs> but I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've tried to read as much as I can about Motown. I, I can't imagine what it was really like, you know, without having been there. But, uh, you know, people don't really know. Hitsville was just a guy's house. And uh, you had a little spot mm -hmm. where you could get together and sing some songs. And uh, when you got together with the girls at the Supremes, you recorded a song. You were in, you were out, and next day maybe recording another one. And that was basically it. You were doing it in one take, maybe a couple of takes. Well, it depends. You know, sometimes there were lots because we actually recorded with uh, with the band right there in the earlier days. You know, the Funk Brothers, and so that was always a fun. It was like being at a party with your own band. With those guys. So right? yeah, just, so that was so much fun. It didn't matter how long the tapes were because you were having fun while you were doing it. And in fact, someone said, "Wow, well, it's it, the music sounded so so happy." And a lot of times it had to do with mistakes. You know, you make a mistake and, and the band would be laughing, and then they say, "Okay, cut." You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there was a lot of uh, happiness. I remember I kept diaries back in those days, and uh, I, I remember being, we were there when um, little Stevie Wonder had his audition, uh, and, and Barry Gordy said, well, I have this little kid coming in here, Ronnie White of the Miracles is going to bring this little guy, he's a blind guy, and and here he's a genius, and we were like wondering, what the heck is a genius? We never really <laughs> met a genius, you know, that we know of. And then, of course, little, then little Stevie Wonder came in, and he was, he jumped on every instrument and started playing the drum. The piano, the horse. Anything that was ever like, oh, that's what a genius is at nine years old. Is that what he was? So, nine? Uh, wow. he, I, yeah, he, he may have been just, just nine. I think it was just nine, yeah. Yes, very, very young. So, you know, we would, it was very exciting. Uh, it was. It was just being in, in this wonderful, creative place. Motown really was very creative and uh, lots of wonderful people there. You know, Holland Doja Holland, Smokey mm. Robinson, of the, of the Miracles. Uh, you know, just all these people writing music, and it was just filled with music, if, if you can imagine how that is. And it was good, you know, kind of new music, and, and so everybody was very excited. Yeah, create. Yeah, the creativity. Uh, uh, yeah, I can imagine, like almost like like the Brill Building in New York. What was going on there? Yeah. At the time, yeah. you know, just, just just putting it out there. Here, try that. Try this. Try this, and and uh, and making it happen. And and the talent mm -hmm. behind it, and and to be able to recognize that talent and put it to use. Wow. Right. And that was Mr. Barry Gordy recognizing it, you know, and and having his dream of starting a company. You mentioned the Brill build, Building, and uh, obviously in New York, so. It's great that uh, the, play, their, the cities had places like that for all the talent to sort of go and, and build their, their mm -hmm. talent. Uh, and, and that was what was really great about Motown. And one thing that's really missing today, you know, in today's market, is that uh, we were taking the arts out of school. And that's part of what all that was about, is that we were able to, to learn and learn about the arts, be a part of it, and, and it really helps people to be happier in life. And it's just sad that, you know, we we don't see that today, and we're really taking uh, the, the art classes and curriculums, all that, out of the school systems. We need to do better than that. 
You're listening to an interview with Mary Wilson of the Supremes that took place on Friday, April 13th, 2018 with me, Rick Rock, on WIBG Wimage 94.3. In part two of the interview, you'll hear more of Mary Wilson's experiences with Motown, her solo career, and some of her aspirations outside of music. Look for the interview with Mary Wilson part two right here on our website, WIBG.com. On Friday, April 13th, 2018, I had the great pleasure of interviewing Mary Wilson, WIBG Wimage 94.3. And what you're about to hear is part two of that interview right here on our website, WIBG.com. You're accomplished. You've been, you've got so many awards and, and, but you're a humanitarian. You are thinking beyond just, you know, making a record and singing songs. You're, yeah. You're serious. <laughs> you're, <laughs> well, you know, it's amazing. I don't know how I got that serious. Maybe because I'm 74 years old, uh. you know, you kind of grow up. I'm, I'm still growing up. Uh, but um, I, I think I, I, I was in, 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 in the Supremes, and we did so many wonderful things. We saw so much in the world. And it, it really helps you to, to see that uh, in, there are some things that need to be done, need to be changed, or need to be uh, implemented. And I guess I just decided that, uh, I don't know if I decided, I just started being a part of all this. You know? <laughs> so, it, yeah, it's good It's good to do so many different things. Like I was a part of a, one other um, organization where we went around the world and they used me as a spokesperson to help uh, some of the people who were had been uh, injured from bombs yeah. that had been dropped years ago, and uh, and so the people living in say Laos and Vietnam and whatever, some of the children would be you know maimed because they would pick up the scraps of metal, and some of the bombs would go off that had not gone off, mm. and these people would be maimed, and uh, so you know we would go around and and help the the, the local villagers to dismantle these bombs and do all those kind of things. Wow. And, and uh, so that was really a, that was really something that I was very, very proud of, actually. Uh, you know, do lots of things, whatever I can do. That's one thing I love about the industry. Uh, there are lots of things I don't, but <laughs> what I like about it is that it gives us, the artists, an opportunity to, to really do something bigger than ourselves and really help other people. So yeah, we you know we talk a lot about, about different things because we've seen the ups and, and the downs in, in those areas, and and yes, our voices uh, help people to hear about things that they normally wouldn't hear, probably. Mary Wilson coming to the Lavoy Theater in Millville May 18th, and we can expect as many Supreme songs as I can. And as you mentioned earlier in, in my introduction, in your introduction of me, that I do jazz. I've only just found my voice in jazz the last, what, five, six, seven years. Don't know why There's no sun up in the sky Stormy weather and I've been doing that, and I love that. So I'll throw a couple of, not jazz songs, but I mean just a couple of my ballads. I love ballads in there to um, let people know who I am. Mm -hmm. Because people think that, you know, they want to come and hear the songs they want to hear. But as artists, you want to also continue to grow. And so that's why I always put in some songs that really show who, not show who I am, but I mean, that I like and enjoy doing, period. Yeah, right, right. Do it for and, you. <laughs> Yeah, and I also have lots, like, sometimes I have people come on stage, depending on the venue, if they allow it. Sometimes they don't, you know, yeah. insurance and all that kind of stuff. Right, right. <laughs> but I like people to come on stage. I mean, the things that people do on stage, it's hilarious. <laughs> so that's always that's always fun, you know, and they, they, they do the steps, the choreography, uh, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's that's fun. So people should come to enjoy themselves. Uh, relive the time when they were like younger and, as I say, crazier. Uh, you know, uh, it's my show is really fun. Uh, I don't don't like people just to come to look at me because uh, you know that's that's I look at me all the time and I'm just me. But uh, come to have fun. You know, that's that's what it's all about. Enjoy. So on top of everything else, you're modest. Well, I yeah, I am <laughs> modest. <laughs> Wow. But but I talk about myself a lot. <laughs> well, that's okay. As, as you said, it's part of the business, you know, part of the business. Taking a look at your yeah. schedule, I see uh, some of the people you're working with, and uh, you'll be working with Chubby mm -hmm. Checker in the next week or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
he is very familiar with our radio station, WYBG. This radio station was radio icon when you were making hits in Hitsville. WYBG was playing your records in Philadelphia. Yes, yes. I also work with Martha Reeves. Mm -hmm. Uh, She and I do lots of concerts together. Um, And and so that's always fun. Uh, In fact, she and I both were with Chubby not not long ago, which was so much fun. He is, you know, he has not changed at all. He's just as, as, as silly and crazy and wonderful as he was years ago, which makes it so much fun. We just get together and talk about the good old days. It's amazing. It's amazing <laughs> how he is. I look at him and I'm like, how is it you don't eat? He, he is so healthy. Yeah. You know, as a man, you know, he's able to go, I can't, I'm not getting up and dancing for an hour and a half straight without <laughs> stopping. You know what? You know, but, but he does it. And so good yeah. for him. You know, that's great. I think it's wonderful. And uh, so. Well, I, you know, what it is is that uh, most of the entertainers I know really enjoy being out there on stage. I mean, you know, we found our, our niche in life. People say, are you going to retire? I was like, why? I'm having fun. <laughs> so, so, you know, a lot of times you have to work, uh, and then you, have to take, you can take vacations in, in between your work. Well, we have vacations while we're working. Uh, and it's fun, and people see us having fun, which makes them have more fun, and that's what it's all about. Life is a big vacation. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, yes, if you're lucky. So we talked about uh, Mary Wilson, original founding member of the Supremes, uh, recording at Hitsville with, in Motown, and uh, you have some recent recordings. So I do have a couple of songs online. You might want to go in, and Google up and find out. Uh, there's one called Time to Move On that was a dance hit about last year, I think it was, maybe two years now. Got to keep on moving, 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 moving. I got to move. Moving, moving, uh, time to move on. And then I have another one called Life's Been Good that to Me. That is Rihanna Lex Guest. She's one of the founding members of the legendary group Supreme. She's now on tour. And for Mother's Day, I have a song called uh, Johnny May, which is a great Mother's Day song. I want to tell you about the most fabulous woman in the universe. She was an angel. She was my mom, Johnny May. I loved her so. Mary Wilson, you are such a lovely lady. Thank you again for uh, talking with us today. Much luck and and, uh, good fortune in the the future. And May 18th, Lavoie Theater, Millville. We'll see you there. That's so sweet. 